Today, we're going to talk about roles of active transport in living organisms. Before that, we need to understand the meaning of the term active transport. And as I always say, you hear the word active meaning energy is involved somewhere. You hear the word transport meaning it entails movement of some substances from one point to the other. Therefore, it is a type of physiological process which includes usage of energy and also transportation of some substances. So, the definition of the term active transport is movement of substances such as ions and sugars across the semi-permeable membrane against concentration gradient by use of energy. The word against concentration gradient suggests that if there are two regions whereby one region is of a low concentration while the other is of a higher concentration, instead of these substances being moved from a region of low to a region of high concentration, there is movement against concentration gradient in sense that substances are moved from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. In that case, we refer to it as against concentration gradient and most importantly, by use of energy. There are various instances where the process of active transport takes place in the body of we living organisms. For example, excretion of wastes from the body cells. In our day-to-day -day activities, when we eat some food, those foods are broken down to yield energy to we living organisms and as that happens, there is also waste products which come out as a result of that. For example, nitrogenous wastes such as urea, which may be present in blood after the process of respiration has taken place, then these nitrogenous wastes need to be eliminated out of the body, out of this blood to be specific. How is it eliminated from the blood vessel? It gets out through active transport whereby it will be carried from that blood vessel into the kidney tubules. Remember this process takes place inside the kidney at a spe specific place called kidney nephron. Within the kidney nephron, this nitrogenous waste needs to be accumulated out to the kidney tubules after which it will be directed to the urinary bladder whereby it will be eliminated as a waste product. Number two, absorption of mineral salts by the roots. The plant roots always absorb mineral salts from the soil. For them to absorb this mineral salt from the soil, there must be deficit of those minerals in the body of a plant. Since there is that deficiency of those minerals inside the body of a plant, then definitely outside the root, there is a very high concentration and those minerals will be absorbed into the plant root through the process of active transport. For example, you apply the ammonium phosphate, that is the DAP fertilizer, while planting. When this plant has developed some roots, these roots will now absorb uh, these fertilizer elements, which are highly concentrated. The process involves active transport. Number three, absorption of digested food from the alimentary canal into the bloodstream. When we eat some food, such as food rich in sugar and some types of carbohydrates, amino acids, vitamins and all that. These substrates are required in the body. But when it is inside the small intestine, the process of absorption needs to take place whereby these substances may be absorbed into the bloodstream through the process of active transport. Sugars are highly concentrated and therefore they get into the bloodstream through the process of active transport. Remember, 
I say that active transport is the movement of substances such as sugars and ionic salts across the semipermeable membrane against concentration gradient by use of energy. Number four, absorption of sugars and salts by the kidney tubules. I've talked about the kidney tubules time and again and I still not hesitate to repeat it once again. The kidney tubules are found in the region of the kidney known as the kidney nephron. This is the point at which exchange of materials such as sugars and nitrogenous waste may take place whereby sugars may be absorbed from the kidney tubules into the bloodstream while nitrogenous waste may be absorbed from the blood capillaries into the kidney tubules so that they can be eliminated out of the body. The process involved active transport. Let's talk about the last one. The last role of active transport is called accumulation of substances into the body to offset the osmotic imbalance. There are instances whereby inside the body tissues the amount of salts and sugars may be a bit lower. And some instances the amounts of sugars and salts required may be a bit higher. And therefore, if the ionic salts level goes a bit lower, then there is what we call osmotic imbalance because this part of the body, specifically blood, will not be able to absorb water from the surrounding, yet it is required. So, in such case, we refer to it as osmotic imbalance. What happens under such circumstances? Much salts need to be absorbed into the blood so as to increase its concentration and this will finally enable it to absorb water into the bloodstream. Therefore, we refer to that as the process of offsetting the osmotic imbalance. And the reverse is true. When there is too much salt concentration in the biological system, specifically blood for that matter, then it means that some salts need to be eliminated out of the body. And therefore, these salts which are in the body needs to, li to literally be eliminated out of the body in the process of active transport. This may involve usage of the carrier molecules which will facilitate transportation of these salts out of the body into uh, the uh, specific parts such as the kidney tubules so that they can be eliminated. That's the end of lesson number 18.